Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome on our show tonight Mr. Jaspal Somi, the founder of Chananda Cultural Society. Mr. Jaspal Somi is a retired environmental engineer who went to the USA in the mid 60s for further studies. He worked for the US Department of Energy in Washington, D.C. for over 30 years. After retirement in 2009, he moved to New Delhi and founded the Chananda Cultural Society, a non governmental organization dedicated to spreading the teachings of the Ascended Masters in India. His NGO is also engaged in performing charity work for the children of the Delhi City Public Park employees. He has been following the teaching of the Ascended Masters for the past 45 years and holds workshops and seminars throughout the NCR region. Uh, welcome Mr. Jaspalji, it's a great pleasure and honor to have you with us tonight. So today we will be talking on the topic of the knowledge of Ascended Masters, Angels and the Elementals. I am sure most of us have no clue about these aspects of human life which are very much present around us but we, have, we don't know how to harness their energies, how to take their help and how to ascend to their level where they, they exist. So, uh, beginning with my first question tonight, uh, Jaspalji, please tell us who are Ascended Masters. First of all, uh, thank you Shivaji uh, for having me and thank you all the viewers. It's a pleasure of my deep heart to be with you today. Answering your question Shivaji, who are the Ascended Masters? And that is a question that is a very timely also something that people are not, are not used to really this word Ascended Master. Ascended Masters are our elder brothers and sisters who have freed themselves from this cycle of birth and rebirth from every part of the world, from every gender, every since eons, since, since, since day one when the evolution of the earth began, we call it moksha in India. So, they have freed themselves and they have become from the free from the coming rebirth and they call to at this point they are called ascended masters and they are showing us the way how we can become like them how we can free ourselves from the cycle of birth and rebirth like they did okay so uh, can you tell us who are the few ascended masters who are currently among us and to whose level we can aspire to rise that is a very good question because that's where we start because in India and I, I believe also in other parts of the world, I'm from USA also. So people do not know this word Ascended Master. So how do we recognize them? How do we know what is Ascended Master? Let's talk about in India. We have many, many saints in India, uh, you know, who have walked the earth. Let's start with uh, Gautama Buddha. We have a Krishna. We have a, let's talk Mahavatar Babaji. <laughs> We have Guru Nanak Dev Ji, we have Guru Gobind Singh Ji, we have many, many great beings, you know. We, we used to call them as Devi Devtas, but not the Ascended Masters. So now this term is being introduced so people can really know that there is another level called Ascended Master that is within their reach to, for everyone, that we can become that. And then we look at the other Ascended Master like I think I can mention some more names a little bit later on. They are called Ascended Master Al Moria. I think the Ascended Master will talk about that. Ascended Master Kutumbi. Ascended Master is also Lord Maitreya Buddha, Gautama Buddha. So they are, they are actually numberless numbers of the, of the you know, Ascended Master. But somehow we call them as Devi Devtas or we call them by other names but not as Ascended Master. Okay, so you mean to say once upon a time they were just like us living ordinary lives uh, on this plane and through their efforts and through their interest in spirituality and their selflessness and their inner greatness they were able to transcend that human limitation and reach to this level of ascended master. That is very true and exactly the way you put it. This is the, this is the way. Now the path is being opened to people on the earth that this something that they have achieved that is the goal of life, <laughs> you know. You know, when I was growing up, when I was on my spiritual journey, my spiritual search, you know, 
this question came to me, what is the purpose of life? Why I am here? You know, of course my friends say, well, you know, your purpose of life is to, you know, I went to America, then you get a job, then you get married, then you have, you know, house, buy a house, then you have a car, then you go to party, then you do save the money, then you retire. Mm-hmm. Well, that is true. But what is the inner purpose of life? And that was driving me. I said, well, maybe someone should know the answer. So now when I came to know about that there is an inner purpose of life, and these ascended masters, that some of them we have mentioned by name, they have achieved it. And there is some somebody over there in America who knows the, them also, you know. So I wanted to know who are those ascended masters. How can I find them? Okay. Whom do you refer to when you say of, when you speak of ascended masters in America? Jesus Christ was, I think, it's a Western, Western mm-hmm. nation, you know. So there are most of the people in America are Christians, mm-hmm. Christian majority. But they, unfortunately, they don't, the Christians, do not recognize or do not want to accept it for some reason this word as a Sunday master they call Jesus as a son of God. Mm-hmm. So this organization that I am part of that called Summit Lighthouse in America, they opened up that lid mm-hmm. <laughs> that was on on this, you know, that covers people by religion mm-hmm. only. Mm-hmm. And they removed that lid and said, Well look, under this lid there is a spirituality. And no there are no compartments of religion, so called. And you can connect with them. So Jesus Christ, I came to know about him that he, his role was also to show everyone to become like him. He's ascended master Jesus Christ, you know, and we can follow him. So I, then I started my journey from him, and then I was led to the other ascended masters. Mm. Other ascended masters. So can you shed light about those ascended masters uh, whom you've been inspired by? You know, I'm so proud, I can say that, and um, to be in India, mm-hmm. uh, because I'm Indian, and India is the land of saints, you know. Right. India, when the rest of the world, it is known that when the rest of the world was in darkness, India was called the, the golden light of illumination. People were coming from all over the world to India, mm-hmm. wanted to learn what is that in India that is a deep spirituality. Mm-hmm. So. Gautama Buddha, he was... He was like Neem Karoli Baba, Swami Nityananda, Sai Baba, they are all... There are many, the many... Category? Yes, there are many, many even beings... Even today? Even... Well, yes, uh, I would say that there have been many saints that have come to India, but I will come back to that. Yeah, there are saints and there are saints, you know. And then we have... One, one, one has to really say... Uh, in this, in this place, you know, how do I find a true saint? Mm-hmm. How do I find someone who is genuinely saint connected? And that is something that I think another, maybe come to that question a little bit later. How, do one, how does one find mm-hmm. who is the saint and who is something that is not quite, but looks like a saint? And that is the, really the challenge of a true seeker in this, in this world. Okay, so how can we identify any ascended master? If this is the challenge, so can you help seekers uh, make this uh, difference? Uh, how to distinguish between who is real and who is not? How to have this wisdom? I will speak for myself. Okay. You know, how did I? How did I? How? I was very hungry. I was very desirous. I really wanted to know God. You are here. I know that. You have, you have sent everyone, you are the creator, I mean all those good things that we know, mm-hmm. where are you? So I was led by my friends to one, second, third, you know, and I said, well, there is something that quite not right here, you know, mm-hmm. I have to go someplace else. So I continued myself from pillar to post, as they say that, mm-hmm. and uh, um, my conclusion is this, after where I am answering this question, you know, is that the person who really wants God, God, God and only God, mm-hmm. and he goes through different tests, mm-hmm. and he says, some people stop there, say, well, this is it. Mm-hmm. How do you know that? Well, there is an inner voice. Mm-hmm. There is an inner something yearning mm-hmm. that says, well, uh, no, oh yes, and that, that is, I am going to share with the viewers that, Please continue 
your search. Continue what you are inspired to do. And maybe it's a test that do we, you know, it's like people, a lot of people run from a jogging like a five kilometer, 10 kilometer, 15 kilometer. And some people go, some people find something on, along the way, you know, that is more tempting or something. I said, well, I, I, that's enough. I, I, I think this is it. But one who wants to go all the way, he knows it, that at the end, there is something waiting for me. And I think that was in my heart. I said, I will, God, you are there. And I, I know that, 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 that I will find you if I continue. And mercy of God. I think it also depends upon your own inner thirst. So if you're actually looking for God, then obviously you will find. But if your quest is for something else, maybe particular possessions, name, name, fame, money, power, then you might stumble upon uh, fake gurus who might mislead you and uh, lead you to misery and a lot of suffering in life. So uh, according to me, if you actually, uh, if you're quite disillusioned by the existence of fake gurus around and stories abound every year, uh, everywhere, you must first question yourself also. Were you actually seeking the truth or were you only seeking uh, comforts? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Okay. Please continue. I think this is the way where the uh, rubble meets the road, you know, Correct. so to speak. Really, you know. really. That's according to uh, like what I have understood that people question everything but they don't question their own inner motives and which is why uh, they get disappointed in the long run. Okay, so since the topic is uh, ascended masters, angels and elemental, so uh, I just want to ask you the next important question. Who are angels? Because we hear so many talks about them and kind of this talk is almost everywhere and a lot of angel workshops are being held. Do angels exist? Who are they? How can, how do they help us? Yes, angels do exist. There are three evolutions that God has created. One is the first evolution we talked about as a as human beings who become ascended masters. Mm -hmm. Second evolution is of the angel, evolution of the angel, which is a separate evolution. They do exist mm -hmm. and they are the, the word angel. Question, what is the, where does the word angel come from? It's an angle, angle. of God's consciousness. It's an angle of God's consciousness. Now you might think, well, what is the angle of God's consciousness? The angle means God has different Angles of understanding. Love is a one angle. Wisdom is another angle. Power is another angle. Healing is another angle. Worship is another angle. So you know, if we call them. So there are. So each angle. There are seven colors. Seven angles. That if you're talking about seven major rays, we call them seven major rays. And these angles they represent each of the seven rays of the angle of God consciousness to help us to help mankind. To illumine them, to increase love in them, to really, as partners, mm -hmm. of really uh, helping them to, so that we as human beings can achieve our goal that we talked about, mm -hmm. becoming who we really are as mm -hmm. you know, sons and daughters of God. Yeah, but uh, you know, you know, human beings are physical beings, so we have our five senses through which we perceive the world. And anything is, becomes like uh, more uh, believable for us only if we can see or feel it or hear it. And angels obviously are ethereal beings where you can't uh, perceive them with your uh, naked eyes. So then how can angel actually make a difference to our lives when they are not even visible? And uh, you can't even say that an angel is around me or I can hear an angel tell me what to do and what not to do. So don't you think that's a big obstacle in our communication with an angel because they come from a realm which is completely invisible to us. So then it becomes a, a questionable itself. Many people will question, do we keep them there? Uh, how can they uh, make themselves known to me? Can I answer something first that is probably will be helpful to answering what is the question on that you asked? Many of us in human body are angels incarnate. That, I don't know whether you, you knew that. So we took the human body as an angel because we wanted to volunteer or we wanted to help others, mm -hmm. uh, the people, so people can see us maybe. That's another way to say that because people don't see the angel. So we do Im imbibe those angelic qualities because people can see us in the human body. Mm -hmm. Now, 
why we don't see angels, why many people don't see angels. And so people, somebody, somebody can think as a myth, is it a myth or is it a reality? Mm-hmm. I have felt the presence of angels since I've been my 45 years of journey of the, you know, and part of the reason is that as I began to purify my temple, my body temple, we have seven chakras in our, so I have to purify each of the chakras. A lot of times the impurities in our chakras, that because that does not allow us to really see those angels, you know, because uh, the angels exist at a level of level of light. Mm-hmm. We are also, as human beings, are beings of light. Our soul is a soul, is a being of light. Mm-hmm. Because the soul is in the human body, mm-hmm. you know, people see us our human body, but the soul has the same ingredient mm-hmm. as the angels have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I hope I'm uh, where, where I'm coming to. So the soul has the same. I think qualities, but also the composition or the, I won't say DNA, but I'll say the same elements, uh, elements or atoms or electrons, you know, as the angel. So we do vibrate at the soul level with with the angel. As we begin to purify our chakras, our our lower bodies, uh, we... And angels help us to do that, by the way. They, that, that, that's what I mean earlier when you answered the question. They help us to purify our chakras. We begin to imbibe at their vibration. And have seen many, many people, uh, angels of different colors. They have seen angels of, you know, pink color, yellow color, blue color, of course, three color, white color. So angels, say, for example, if, if an angel is disembodied, kind of, not in a physical form, then if they have to appear to somebody whose chakras are clear, how would they appear like in the form of light or in the form of some, you know, some being with a feather or uh, any idea? Yeah, they have, well, that's a very good question. Uh, the angels are different because God created them as, you know, as a conveyor. What they happen, they come from the every day, 24 hours, they come from the source, which we call it Great Central Sun. Mm-hmm. That is the source, the hub of light. Mm-hmm. And they, 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 they absorb that light from there, and then they travel to the earth and they deposit that light where, where, they, where we are. They're different in us that they have wings. They're different, they have, we don't, human beings don't have wings, different evolution. Mm-hmm. What also is something unique to remember about them, we as human beings, as sons and daughters of God, we have a three-fourth flame in our heart chakra, which is a, we we'll talk about that later. It's a three-fourth flame of Trinity of diff, three different colors, the yellow, the, the, the pink, and the blue, they are so the three-fourth flame in our heart. So they do not have a three-fourth flame. The God created angels first, and then they created the human beings. Mm-hmm. And here is the very important point. So God created the angel first, and they said, well, now, he created a human being they had, and he gifted the human being with a three-fold flame. And yes, it so all the angels, they bowed before the three-fold flame of, three-fold flame of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, we call it also. You know. So they all bowed before the three-fold flame. Now that in itself is a, something that, why they bow to the three-fold flame? Mm-hmm. Because they were created even, even before the, the human being. But, and that it tells you that they are over that, part that says I'm superior or I'm inferior right. or why did not God really give me that three-four flame. So they are in that totally absorbed in that flame, I call it flame, flame of loving, flame of serving, flame of giving and really making sure that, can I say, use the word, the team wins. You know, it's not individual players. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times they say that who's, who's, going, who's the best player? Mm-hmm. They think, well, who's the best team, you know? We want to serve this team of sons and daughters of God, mm-hmm. and they are our wow. counterpart in that time. Wow, that's such a high state of consciousness to be in. Okay, so how can we work with the angels? Uh, is there a way through which you know, we can uh, communicate with them, get their messages, uh, and also work alongside them, embracing the collective human consciousness? Uh, 
That's an excellent question. You know, and this, this was really, these were the kind of questions that you're asking me, you know, when I started my journey. I, I wanted to know that. Is it a myth? Is that a, something real? Is that, you know, do they exist? And, and how can I be, how can I be a partner? How can I know them? They are prayers, we call them mantras, we call them decrees also. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I belong to an organization in America, you know. So they have a book, we call it prayers, we give them, we call them decrees, like right? the decrees for the angels of the seven colors. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? Each color of angel, they have an archangel. Archangel means a general of that particular ray. So seven rays, there are seven archangels. Mm-hmm. And they work with the archangel, like, 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 like army general or, you know, that. Mm-hmm. so they work in unison. But also the question is that why there are seven? Actually, there are seven major rays. There are five, also five secret rays. So there are seven plus five. There are twelve rays of you know that the angels correspond to. There are twelve archangels also in that way. So they have a particular mission in terms of because they represent a particular quality as an angle of God's uh, characteristic. You know, you can say that way. And they want to impart that. So. So how we work with them, mm-hmm. that's a question. Mm-hmm. How we raise ourselves. So we have been given many, many prayers, particularly for each of the ray. Which one? So we have been told that we, had, we came on a particular ray. We have a major ray, all of us human beings. Mm-hmm. And we have a minor ray, like, like you go to college, you know, you want to do major course, what is your minor one, you know? Mm-hmm. So we have a major ray and we have a minor ray. And we have a sub- certain question and answer that we answer mm-hmm. and then with this objective type question and answer so it takes about 10 15 minutes mm-hmm. and then then gives us the highest score that you score objective type you add the score mm-hmm. and the second highest so then you know your this is your major ray this is your minor ray then you know who is your <laughs> which ray who is the archangel mm-hmm. who is the angel you work with on the first ray and so second all these rays differ from person to person they correct they exactly so the same yes. just like a a thumbprint. It's different for all individuals, so the rays and the combinations could also be a little different for each person. That's very true. So. Basic, you know, characteristics. Absolutely, and it is so because mm-hmm. the reason is this: each one has, each person has a divine mission, unique divine mission, mm-hmm. on a different ray. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's not like the. God did not make us cut with a cookie cutter kind of thing. You know, so really, everyone has this same mission. Everyone has the same mission, but have a, has a unique divine plan, or we call it dharma, accomplish. Dharma to balance and dharma to accomplish uniquely. Right. So, and who are the elementals? Well, we talked about the two evolutions so far. The first evolution is the, the evolution of human beings as a sons and daughters of God becoming a Sunday master. Mm-hmm. Second evolution is angelic evolution. Mm-hmm. The third evolution is called the evolution of the elementals. So again, you can put them on the three evolutions uh, on the threefold flame as we, as we did before. So the elemental evolution is on the blue plume. Mm-hmm. Blue plume is a plume of Brahma. Mm-hmm. The uh, angelic plume is a plume of Shiva or Bing plume. And the yellow plume is a evolution of Vishnu mm-hmm. as a yellow. So the blue, yellow and pink. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the blue one, that we, that the question is about the elementals. Mm-hmm. Elementals are also, there are four, time, four kinds of element, elements and we call them elements. The word elemental came from the word element. Mm-hmm. They are like air, fire, water, and earth. You can say, well, there are five in, where is the fifth one? You know, you might be thinking that there are five elements, which is the fifth one. The fifth one envelops all four of these. So, Sunday Master talked about the four elements, air, fire, water, and earth. Mm-hmm. And these elementals correspond to each of the four elements. Okay. So, so how, is the, can the knowledge of elemental, you know, help human beings? Excellent question again. Uh, how? Because the three of the all three evolutions work together. Mm-hmm. Sons and daughters of God, the, the angelic and the elementals. Elementals help. Let us, let, let's look at the earth 
the elementals on the earth. We call them gnomes. In Hindi, we call them bonas. You know, they you know they were short, you know, four feet, three foot tall. You know, yeah. and they work tirelessly to grow the vegetables, fruits in the garden, flowers, even the you know under the under the earth. You know, the oil, coal, minerals, gold, jewelry, crystals. I mean, you name it, everything. They work on the earth side of the to make the life for us very uh, pleasant, easy life. Acha, uh, now this uh, particular topic uh, reminds me of something which uh, we had read when we were in school. So uh, our books mostly they used to uh, the, the syllabus was of ICSC and I think it was mostly derived from uh, the, the British uh, curriculum. So we had uh, chapters which had mention of uh, beings like elves and pixies and gnomes and dwarfs. So we we very really could never understand who these beings were, and it's, it, their pictures were also drawn. Like you know, maybe uh, these uh, gnomes had very pointy ears, or elves have very pointy nose. And the pixies, I don't remember, but these were the kind of beings which were shown, but which we never ever came across uh, in our daily lives. So we thought that they were mythical creatures. But were they? Are they really mythical creatures, or do they really exist somewhere uh, in some place, uh, doing their own work? And somehow the writers of those stories knew about these beings, and they introduced in those uh, fables and tales. I used to think like that. I also studied in a, <laughs> in a school, a mission school, you know, and they, were, they taught all the kind of things. And then I was, I was thinking along the same lines. I think most of us were, were you, know, you know, thinking like that. That is, are they imagination or are they real or how, where, where do you put them? When I started my journey with the Ascended Master's teachings 45 years ago, then I came to realize they are real. <laughs> and then they have names and they also are very much organized like the angels are organized. Angels have a journal, so the, the four kinds of elements, they work under general, they have a hierarchy also, you know. And, they, and so they are very much dedicated, like angels are dedicated to help the human beings, make them flourish, make them happy, make them what. So they also do that. So let's talk about, the, we talked about the norms, what they do. Then they are beings, we call them sylphs. They purify the air. Mm. They purify the air because if, you know, daily air is kind of polluted air. So we can also ask them, we can give them the energy. We can ask them you know, how to please purify the air by, we have some prayers like that they have been given, how we can activate or how we can tell the sylphs to purify the air over a city. Mm. Or like smog and fog or you know, different things. Likewise, they are. Elementals who purify the water, we call them undines, U-N-D-I-N-E-S. They purify water, like you have whales, you know, mm -hmm. you see whales and the, how, how, they, how, how, they, how they sound when it's in, the, in the ocean, they sing all that. But there are whales, but there are also beings like that who purify the water. Now, that is another thing that we, God did not leave the, uh, did not send us to the earth human beings I'm talking about and left the air part undone and water part undone and ground part undone, how are we going to survive, how are we going to eat. Mm -hmm. So he gave us those things. Then there are fourth type. They are called the salamanders. Because fiery salamanders are very tall. They are 20, 15 to 25 feet tall. What do they do? With the, why are they so tall? As compared to the norms, we are like, like 3 feet tall, you know. So they purify the the ether quadrant or the air, the fire element. They represent the fire element to in the in the nature to balance it. Well, fire element doesn't mean the physical fire per se. Mm. The fire element is the etheric fire. Mm. We do have these four elements we talked about mm. in our body as well. Mm. So I'm so talking you mean about to say that these beings are present within our body also because the body is also performing all kinds of exactly. Functions. And it is not acting as voluntarily as we uh, mostly think it to be that everything is happening on its own. There are beings inside of us. I mean, we know of microcosmic beings like, uh, say, bacteria and all gut bacteria, flora, which kind of you know, facilitates the uh, yes. body functions. But according to your knowledge, there are like these very uh, invisible beings also fun working day and night to help us stay alive, to keep the environment, uh, say, clean. 
and keep and you know the entire cosmic system uh, functioning according to the god's plan is it that you need to say i'll answer it this way it's a very good question in the mi macrocosm we talked about that mm -hmm. in the microcosm body how do they work mm -hmm. our body is also made up of the same four elements mm -hmm. five elements you call mm -hmm. them i'm calling them four elements you know just mm -hmm. to represent they work with us but god has given us another unique elemental mm -hmm. it's called body elemental mm -hmm. this knowledge is not known we have a body elemental who coordinates with this four element outside to so he is an internal physician in our body doctors do not know that scientists do not know that mm -hmm. a lot of teachings that are coming to the fore of the mankind knowledge mm -hmm. about the body elemental mm -hmm. who is our main physician who governs the temperature and body and okay. upset and this and that uh, may i ask you another question which uh, you know if you allow so what is the source of all this esoteric knowledge that you're sharing with us uh, today because uh, you know most people they ask for especially you know, people of today's world who are mostly very skeptical that Uh, how do you know and how can you claim that all these things are true and what is the proof that these things exist so then uh, what do you have to say to satisfy the questions uh, of such people people have asked me this question and i used to have the same question when i started i said i don't want to believe god you know what is the source of it well this is a source which is you know i, I won't say anything uh, other than what is this these things in india people know about the akashic record everything that we do we say we feel we act karma is record being recorded on the akashic records for but lot of people read that you know they are able to read that at individual level but it also the what i'm talking about is at the planetary level at the cosmic level these are akashic records about all these things the ascended masters here comes the knowledge of ascended masters ascended masters have dictated that by reading those akashic records and they are dictated that through their messengers who are both of them are not living i'm talking about summit light house organization that i'm i'm part of 45 years through their messenger who are at that time through them they dictated they read that and even the messenger were gifted to read that akashic records so that is a source of this, all this information so do you envision a time somewhere in the future when the human consciousness has become so sublime that uh, a time will come that we would be able to directly interact with these beings these elementals these angels and ascended masters and uh, go towards a better humanity uh, because i'm sure there was a time when they was uh, you know they were not as invisible to us as they are right now and the knowledge was not as obscure as just not right now i'm sure they they were like very direct and smooth interaction happening between all these uh, elements including us and the earth was flourishing in every department so you envision a time that sooner or later humanity will reach that level where this uh, can happen wow very good question and that was the reason of being all this information this knowledge mm -hmm. being revealed to this organization and the previous organization by the way i'm not mm -hmm. saying this is only organization there were been the last 100 years mm -hmm. there have been many many organization before that there was to cervical society that was in also in mm -hmm. adiyar in madras you know mm -hmm. formerly you know, known as madras mm -hmm. and there was also bridge to freedom and i am movement and there have been many many organization that ascended masters have sponsored and they are the summit light house mm -hmm. is presently there there you know that mm -hmm. i'm i've learned all these things from them why why are they because the earth is at the verge at the threshold of a golden age satyug and in the previous satyug elementals and angels and human beings they worked together mm -hmm. their people were able to see master face to face mm -hmm. god and man we, we know the, in in our in our vedas in the books like that, you know it's written that mm -hmm. that you know, the, you know baba ji and then sanjay master uh, you know mahata baba ji he talks about that out of body of a yogi you know he, he talks about that you know so these things have happened so the all the saints who have come so far they have written their books ramakrishna ji is another one yeah. you know they have the force saw this things coming yeah. so sanjay master the dream or vision yeah. is that yes that day is not at far at 
far, far in the future when, when all these things elementals will work and the environment, environment can be once again crystal, crystal, crystal you know, beautiful and shining and, and no pollution and you know, and all the good things and one thing can I share with also with the, with, with, the, with your yes, audience. Yes, I have been told that in the previous golden ages, the color of the earth, the soil was white. It's not like this, you know. So I said, well, what happened? You know, why this color of the soil? Because of the karma, the negativity, the energy, it changed. I also was told that the rose, rose, I think you mentioned earlier, the roses did not have any thorns in them. They were all beautiful roses because of the duality of the human consciousness, anger, resentment, love and hate, kind of all the things. The, the, the elementals mimic that and they brought those things because that's what they do. Elementals mimic whatever they see that and they brought the thorns into the flowers and we see the, the weeds, we see the germs, we see all the kind of things that were not meant to be there. So the vision is that when the golden age will come by God's grace of course, mm -hmm. our free will also, mm -hmm. mankind's free will, mm -hmm. all will vanish. Mm -hmm. Golden age will come and God and man will talk face to face. That's my prayer, that's my dream, that's the vision of the Sunday Masters also, you know. Okay, uh, that was very, very fascinating and I'm sure to all the audiences uh, watching this show today, uh, this, all of this was very, very eye-opening for all of you. Um, I don't think uh, that you have ever heard about such things, but if they do exist, I think it's very exhilarating, it's very exciting to know of a world which is magical, which is fascinating, which is uh, so thrilling because we all know that our lives have become very mundane. We feel that uh, going about our uh, everyday life, earning our daily bread and looking after our children and then securing say a, a good bank balance and then eventually passing away is our fate. But who could have thought that God or the Divine had really uh, imagined a very very magnificent world for all of us which was magical which was thrilling which where we could uh, see or you know kind of look forward to the most uh, exciting things every day the world unraveling in it before us and it's in the most uh, exciting manner and if we want this to happen if we want magic to be a part of our everyday lives if we want to rise above the mundane and actually claim our uh, divine uh, inheritance. Uh, we must uh, really uh, try to make us our consciousness more sublime and see what we can do to help Mother Earth, to help humanity, to uh, uh, bring in the new era as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. I like to add. Thank you, Shivaji. I like to share with uh, your viewers. First of all, I want to thank you and the life. Uh, Positive Foundation for having me and on, on your on your sh on your channel on your show. You have a website that you may want to uh, jot down and you want to visit our website. It's called www.chananda c h a n a n d a dot o r g dot org. www.chananda dot org. Also, we have a workshops that we do on Zoom workshop free of charge every Sunday. All of you are welcome. So please do uh, visit our, our our website. We have information about how you can join our 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 Zoom workshops. And uh, also my phone number is over there. I can, can I share my phone number? Yeah, with please, please share your phone number with our audience. They would love to be a part of your workshops and learn so much about such fascinating hidden knowledge uh, from you. Thank you. My phone number is a, it's a, it's a WhatsApp number, but you can call me uh, anytime in America or here. Double nine seven, double one two, three four eight three. Again, double nine seven, double one two, three four eight three. I look forward to greeting you, talking to you, welcoming you, sharing you what little I know because there's so much more to learn for me from just talking with you, listening to you. Thank you again, Shivaji, for having me on the show. Thank you, Jaspalji, for coming to our show tonight. It was a pleasure talking to you. And it was actually also very exciting because whatever we heard from your mouth was completely new for me as well as for my audience. Thank you. Thanks.